Hey everyone, Laura here with Rags to Rugs, and today I'd love to share with you how to add a scallop border to your crocheted rag rugs. For this demonstration, we're going to be using a Q-sized crochet hook. If you want to round up supplies and don't already have one, we have these available on our website at all times. We'll add a link at the bottom of this video. We're going to actually be using a, a demonstration rug from an earlier video on this channel, How to Crochet a Round Rag Rug. For that video, we ended up with a 22-inch round rug using our wonderful Real Red Broadcloth Solid Fabric Rolls. This is exactly what it looks like. It required six yards, and coincidentally, there's six yards on each of our rolls. We have eight different colors to choose from in these. You're going to love them. And we chose another color, ebony black, for our scallop border. For this particular size rug, you anticipate using about a third of this roll. So these are available at all times. Again, we're going to provide a link at the bottom of the channel for our broadcloth solid rolls. Everybody's loving them and asking about them. So we're going to make sure to make it real easily available to you on this video. This and many, many other colors to choose from. So on that note, we're going to get started right away. Okay, so let's get started. Now, two things I'd like to point out. First one is you need to allow with this scallop pattern that I'm going to teach you, uh, five inches overall on the size of your rug. For instance, this is a 22 inch round rug presently with the scallop that we're going to be adding two and a half inches on the top, two and a half inches on the bottom. This will become a 27 inch round rug. So if you're doing custom work particularly and the customer is called out a certain size, take that five inches into consideration. The second thing which is very important on this pattern is that you need to, uh, the perimeter stitches on your rug need to be divisible by four. It could be 80 stitches, 100 stitches, 120 stitches, so long as the number of stitches, total stitches on the perimeter of your rug is divisible by four, this pattern is going to work great. What if it's not? You can do one of two things. You can back off this outer row and add a stitch or two or three within that outer row to end up with a, a, the number of stitches divisible by four, or you can just add another row, a row on your rug, again, counting, uh, starting with this very first one and counting around and making sure that those the number of those stitches is divisible by four and this pattern is going to work right. Now we're gonna get started right away. Um, we are going to be, again, adding this ebony black to this real red broadcloth. And if you've watched an earlier video, a very popular one, on how to avoid the stair step when you are transitioning from one color to another, this smooth transition of color is what we're going to be looking for so you don't have that stair step. If you've not seen the video, I'll add a link at the bottom of this video as well. And this will be a wonderful review. So at this point right here is where I'm going to transition to the ebony black and start my scallop pattern. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to insert my hook in that very next stitch. We're going to tighten down this last little piece of fabric right here at the base of this stitch that's on your hook right now. And we're going to trim this back to one fourth of an inch, just like that. I'm going to hold on to that fourth inch strip, remove my crochet hook, and remove that last stitch. We're going to replace that in just a minute, so don't worry about that. Open that up. We're going to add to it then our ebony black, laying one on top of the other. We're going to trim our wings because this is a practice I always do to make your rug look a little bit smoother in the end result. Folding it back a half an inch, giving it a quarter inch slit right in the center, opening those up, laying my black one on top of the red, and we're going to find the end of this nice beautiful long strip we're going to use to do our scallop, feed it up from the bottom, pull it all the way through, kind of a review on adding fabric strips together on our rug, the no sew method. Pull that all the way through, nice long strip, give it a little bit of a tug and we're ready to start rocking and rolling here. So we're going to re replace our crochet hook Replace that last stitch, hook our fabric and draw it through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tighten it down right here, nice and tight against the hook, 
Insert our hook in the very next stitch, hook that ebony block, pull it through, all the way through, tighten it down right at the neck of that stitch, right here. Tighten it down nice and tight. And chain one. As you will see, now we'll, we will have a very smooth transition of color. Here's the red, and now we're starting with that beautiful black. And this little stitch right here will be the beginning of our scallop pattern. The next thing we're gonna do is actually, this is the stitch we're in right here. We're gonna skip this next stitch and we're gonna be inserting our hook in the very next stitch. So here we are here, skip this one, insert our hook right here. First, we're going to practice doing our double crochet stitches. If you've never done a double crochet, this is a wonderful time to learn. As you can remember, on a single crochet stitch, we insert our hook and hook the fabric and draw it through. Whereas the only difference on a double crochet is we're gonna hook our fabric and then insert our hook into that next space. Hook the fabric again, draw it through. We now have three loops on our hook. Hook that fabric again, draw it through two. Hook the fabric and draw it through the remaining two and you've just completed a double crochet. Believe it or not, we're going to do this double crochet four more times in that same exact space. Hook the fabric, insert, hook the fabric again, three loops on my hook, hook it, draw through two, hook it, and draw through the remaining two. Three more times. One, two, excuse me, three. <laughs> this is the fourth one. And the, excuse me, just falling off my hand here. And the fifth one. That's the start of a very beautiful scallop. This, the pattern starts right here. We've got five scallops. We're gonna start that pattern all over again by skipping this very next stitch, inserting our hook in the next stitch, which is right here. Here we are here. Skip this one. We're gonna insert our hook in this one and do a single crochet stitch only in that. Again, as a review, insert our hook, hook the fabric, draw it through, hook the fabric, and draw through both loops on your hook. And we finish, start, that's the beginning of the next pattern. Single crochet, skip one, five double crochets in this. Simple pattern, right? Hook our fabric, insert, Hook our fabric again three loops, through two loops, through the main, remaining two loops, and that's number one of five double crochets that we're going to be inserting in this space. That's two, insert, three, and hook our fabric and insert. There's this will be the end of the fourth one. And the fifth one. And just like that, we have now completed two scallops. And you can already see how beautiful this rug is going to be. Now we're gonna continue on around the rug until we reach over here so I can show you how to finish this scallop. Okay, we're nearing the end. I'm gonna start this next pattern, single crochet. We're gonna skip the next two stitches and start five double crochets. There's one. There's the third one. And one more. And we're going to start another pattern with a skipping one, one single crochet here. Turn just a little bit here so you can see it better, hopefully. We're going to skip this next stitch, and we're going to put five double crochets here. Pretty simple pattern, right? Not a whole lot to it. Just remember to count those stitches. 
divisible by four, just take whatever number on your perimeter, divide it by four, and make sure you've got a nice even number there. If so, this pattern is gonna be slick for you. And I think you're really gonna enjoy using it. Always remember too, five inches overall difference is what this pattern's going to yield. There's five stitches there. I'm gonna skip this stitch, single crochet stitch here, which is the start of our very last pattern. We're gonna skip that next one and we're gonna put five double crochets right here. And that'll be our last scallop for this pattern and for this beautiful rug. I think you can already see how stunningly gorgeous that simple red 22 inch brown rug with a border, a scallop border with a difference in personality. I used two very bold colors in this, but you can use pastel colors, you can use pretty much any color on your scallops. Add to your current color palette and enhance it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off about 12 inches on the end of this, just like that. And I'm going to be inserting my hook. Here's that very first stitch where we transitioned from the red to the black. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna insert my hook right here. And I'm going to pull that all the way through, enhancing that first stitch there, you can see that. Pull that all the way through here. And that is the beginning of that next scallop. See how easy that, that was and how, how good it looks there? What I'll be doing now is just literally feeding this, weaving it through the back side of our rug using a safety pin. It's usually the best way. Just work it through those stitches back and forth in a weaving method and it will turn out absolutely wonderful. Now using that transition technique to avoid the stair step, this hasn't even woven in yet, so you can see when that's tightened down a little bit, you will not be able to see, number one, where the scallop started and stopped. It's just a fluid motion there. As well, it's a very fluid motion in color. There's your red, right over, and I'm pulling that up a little bit too much there, but you can see red, fluid motion of color, the black here, particularly on a really, two bold colors like that, you don't want that stair step there. So refer back to that video, refer back to the video on how to crochet a round rug. Uh, this video will help you with this as far as the scallop. And uh, yeah, hopefully that helped. Hey, so thank you so much for checking out our video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned it, and I hope you like me want to put a scallop border on every single rug because it just brings a little bit of charm, a little bit of personality, and a little bit of finish to your rug. It's amazing what a difference a scallop border can make to your rug. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please leave them below. Check out all the links that we've added so that uh, you can check out other videos and get back to our website to order your crochet hooks or whatever materials you need, broadcloth solids or whatever. In the meantime, as always, we appreciate you and make it a great day.